This is going to be a study on the subject of are pre-tribbers cowards? A lot of the post-trib crowd are coming out and saying that the people who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture are just cowards and don't want to go through the tribulation. They claim that they want to go through the tribulation and they want to face persecution for Jesus. And for that fact, many of these men will call the pre-tribbers cowards for not having the same feelings. And I'm going to give you some reasons why I don't agree with this teaching. And this isn't going to be a study about proving a rapture happens before the tribulation or trying to sway you to believe the rapture happens before the tribulation. I feel like these guys are going to stay believing that and there's nothing I can do to say or say to convince them otherwise. So that's besides the point. I'm just going to talk about why just because you believe a pre-tribulation rapture that doesn't make you a coward. But number one, I don't believe it makes you a coward because you obviously fear the Lord if you don't want to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Verses like Proverbs 9 and verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you fear God, you have wisdom. In Revelation chapter 6, the Lamb opens the seals. Have you read what the seals are? If those aren't the wrath of God being poured out, then I don't know what is. It is the wrath of God because the one opening the seals is the Lamb. Who's, who else's wrath would it be? I know that if I die, I will go to heaven. But who in their right mind would want to die in the events of the time of Jacob's trouble? Who would want to go through that? Who would want to be beheaded? And these guys will talk about being beheaded like it's no big thing, like it's just the easiest way to die. But, but what about what they do to you before you are beheaded? What about all the torture? God is allowing Christians today to be tortured for the faith today. Do you honestly think he wouldn't let you be tortured? God let the Apostle Paul persecute Christians back then before Paul was saved. Why are you any better than those Christians? I understand that they honestly believe they are going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. So I understand why they say they can't help that they are going through that time period. But I can't understand why they want to go through that time period. Uh, there are a lot of things in this life that God wants us to do and he puts us through those things. But many times we don't want to go through those things. We don't want to go through the loss of a loved one or pain and suffering. Do you think Job wanted to go through all that stuff he went through? If you say you enjoy all the trials and tribulations that you are going through right now, then I think you're lying. Will you enjoy the time of Jacob's trouble if your wife and children are being tortured in front of you? Evil men who are devil-possessed will perform bizarre and gruesome acts on people. Are you a coward for not wanting to go through something like that? I don't believe you would be a coward. You have to think real highly of yourself to think only cowards would want to escape that horrible time period. You must think that you're real macho and spiritual to think that you're so good that you're not scared of what's coming. I believe the scriptures teach a pre-trib rapture and I'm glad it does because I don't want to go through the tribulation where Christians everywhere will be tortured and killed for their faith. And if that does make me a coward, then I guess I am one. How is being afraid of that make you a coward? Is that how you want to die is by being tortured to death? Sure, we should have been tortured. We should have already been tortured. We should have already been burning in hell today. But Jesus Christ came to die for our sins and he took our place on the cross. I mean, who enjoys pain? Are you like the bell worshippers that started cutting themselves? Or like the devil-possessed man in Mark chapter 5 who spent his time crying and cutting himself with stones? There are men who believe that they have to hang on a cross themselves as punishment for their sin. And they will willingly let someone nail them to a cross. I mean, you can't pay for your sin any more than it has already been paid for. And I'm not saying that they believe that, but it's almost like they believe that a little bit. But Jesus Christ died for sins past, present, and future. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might, might be made the righteousness of God in him. But number two, I don't believe people who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture are cowards because hell is a scary place. 
Let me ask you this, do you want to go to hell? Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You should be afraid of going to hell. Uh, were you a coward because you believed the gospel so that you could escape hell? Did that make you a coward? And the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be as close to hell as it gets without actually being hell. When the fourth seal is opened, hell actually breaks loose. In Revelation 6 and 8 it says, And I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And powers, power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Am I a coward because I don't want to be here for this? When you got saved, God told you there was a hell. Do you think God believes you're a coward for believing the gospel so that you wouldn't have to go to hell? Are you a coward for doing that? No way. God told you that the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be a horrible time in the book of Revelation. Are you a coward for wanting to escape that time? I don't believe so. And number three, I don't believe pre-tribbers are cowards because... We're not trying to prove that we're something when we're nothing. Galatians 6.3 says, For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Without Jesus Christ, I'm on my way to hell, and I'm not worth shooting. By calling pre-tribbers cowards, it makes it seem like you believe you're so tough and macho. You are so weak that God can use a little stomach bug and bring you to your knees in front of a toilet that you would just sit on. It doesn't take nothing for God to take you out. I mean, he could just thank it and you're dead. Many of the post-tribbers are so puffed up and think that they are superior to the pre-trib crowd. While the opposite is also true that pre-tribbers think that they're better. But just because you believe the rapture happens at a certain time doesn't make you more spiritual or a better Christian. You're a sinner regardless, and the only reason you're not going to face eternal hell is because Jesus Christ died on the cross. To pay for your sins. I don't have to prove I'm something. Because I can't. I'm nothing. And without Jesus Christ's imputed righteousness. All my righteousness is as filthy rags. I don't think so highly of myself. That I believe God needs me. God doesn't need me. I could be wiped off the face of the earth today. And the work of God would still go on. A lot of these guys are basing. Their righteousness off going on so winning marathons and they just they're doing so much that they think if they just died then the work of God would die and nothing else would be going on and the world would just go to hell if they weren't here that's what it seems like that they believe and I recently heard a post-trib pastor say that if the pre-tribbers get raptured and leave their clothes behind then their clothes will do more for God than they did when they were actually here and that's a bold statement he is letting you know that his works are superior and if you're not a post-tribber then you're not as important and, and you're not doing as much for God as he is doing you can't be much of a soul winner if you believe in a pre-trib rapture he sounds pretty puffed up the truth is we could all be doing better and I'm not saying these men don't have a lot of zeal and they aren't doing something for God and I'm not saying I'm better than them they're probably better Christians than I'll ever be but they're putting people down for believing something that they don't and making themselves sound more spiritual because they believe in a post-trib rapture. And I don't want to think of myself as something when I'm nothing. If I did go through the tribulation and survived, it would prove nothing but that God spared a little ant on the earth that he could have crushed with his pinky. It's almost like these guys think they need some type of final purification or something before they go to heaven but verses like ephesians 5 and verse 26 says he sanctifies and cleanses us with the washing of water by his by the word first john 1 7 says the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin all my sins were gone the moment i believed on jesus christ i don't need to prove anything and i don't need any purification I don't need anything else. The blood of Jesus Christ has made me spotless before God. I have nothing left to prove. I can't prove anything. Jesus Christ proved it all. 
when he died on the cross. And I got his sinless record applied to my record when I believe the gospel. And number four, if you really want to show your love for Jesus Christ and be persecuted for him, then you can move somewhere else. Since you want to prove your love for Jesus so much, then how come you wouldn't do a soul winning marathon in a place like Iraq or North Korea or Pakistan or Sudan or Syria? And let those evil men cut you up in pieces so that you can prove how brave and macho and separated you are for God. We have the option to live here where we can worship God freely, go soul winning freely, read the Bible freely. Uh, you don't live over there in those places so you don't understand. And would it make you a coward for not wanting to move over there? I don't believe it would. It is like the post-trib crowd doesn't see born-again believers going through persecution today. It's a big world and there are men dying for the faith every day. And there is no doubt about it, we could be beheaded for the faith and tormented here in America before the rapture even happens. We could go through extreme persecution. And we aren't trying to escape the tribulation because we are cowards. We teach the rapture before the tribulation because we believe what the Bible says about it. We teach the rapture pretty much for the same reason you teach the post-trib rapture. Because that is what you believe the Bible says. And I'm not saying all post-tribbers are puffed up and trying to be macho men that don't fear God like they should. But a lot of these guys are puffed up and think they are more spiritual than others because they believe something differently. While the same is also true for many people who believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. You have people on both sides who are making each other look bad. There's pre-tribbers that make pre-tribbers look horrible. While there's post-tribbers who make post-tribbers look awful. I think the rapture debate has been blown out of proportion. And I think it has done more harm than good. If someone wants to believe in a post-trib rapture, then that's fine. Who cares? I don't think I'm superior than them. Just because I believe a certain way. And I just wanted to make this quick study because I don't agree with the pre-tribbers or cowards statement that I just heard. It would be normal for anyone in their right mind to be scared of going through the tribulation. That doesn't make them a coward. But if you're not saved, the first thing you should be thinking about right now is getting saved and being sure that you're going to heaven. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you. Unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The gospel is this. Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He was buried. And he rose again the third day. If you want to be saved. Then you have to put your trust in that gospel. If you don't put your trust in that gospel. Then you will die one day and go to hell and you'll be in hell just like the rich man was in Luke chapter 16 where it says he lifted up his eyes being in torments the blood of Jesus Christ is what takes away our sins Colossians 1 14 says in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins the Bible says in the book of Acts that Jesus Christ purchased us by his own blood we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're not saved by our works. Romans 4, 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Titus 3, 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saves us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you want to be saved, then come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner. That's why you need a Savior is because you're a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I hope that you will come to Jesus Christ before it's entirely too late. Because the Bible talks about in the book of Hebrews... It says, but is it 
but as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. It's a general rule that pretty much everybody dies. And everybody is going to face judgment. If you die without Jesus Christ, one day you will go to the great white throne judgment. And God will open the book and you'll be judged according to your works. You won't be judged about whether or not you're going to heaven or hell. You already denied Jesus Christ, so you're going to hell, but you're going to be judged on how bad hell is going to be for you. And then Jesus Christ is going to say, depart from me into everlasting fire. You're going to be tossed into a lake of fire. But if you'll believe the gospel, then you can escape the coming tribulation and also going to hell and the future lake of fire. And I hope that you'll do that today.